We know that empathy is the ability to feel the world of another as our own. We're literally capable of feeling the pain of someone else. Psychologists claim if we experience empathetic pain for a long time, we often become emotionally exhausted. This happens to firefighters, those who work in emergency services, etc. Here's what they say. Through empathy, we come to feel the pain of someone else. However, we also feel the pain of someone else through compassion. But in this case, we can handle it. That's because compassion comes with love. That's the whole difference between the two. Yes. Agree, right? I even checked the dictionary. Empathy is the ability to identify with the emotions of another. But compassion, that is sympathy for the suffering of another. It's like stepping into the world of another and feeling his experience. How can we facilitate this within ourselves? As I understand, if that feeling was fostered, we would live in a different world. Yes, we would nurture it, but I think that's possible. Really? We are just not involved in this process. Generally, people at the age of 13 to 14 can fully resonate with another person's suffering, and they would then need to be further educated on it. That, of course, would drastically change the world. Of course, no doubt about it. So is it possible to nurture compassion in a person? The understanding of compassion for others can be taught so a person may understand how to handle it, so much so that through this compassion for another, he may share another's suffering by taking it partially upon himself, and in this way neutralize their suffering. Wouldn't you get burned out? No. The fact that you neutralize it by engaging it with him, sympathizing, and being compassionate, you gradually break up his suffering into a number of smaller parts, and by doing so, bringing him relief. Similarly, you can bring the whole world into balance to an inner state of being you can call blissfulness. So shared compassion among all the people on earth will lead to a state of blissfulness in the world. Yes, that's exactly what we have to achieve in our connection. Because otherwise, we have some very serious problems ahead of us. That's because our ego continues to grow and the upper light is revealed in relation to the ego ever so more, meaning we are going to feel greater pressure in relation to our ego, such that it will be unbearable. If we are not going to be able to unite and share all of that among ourselves, then we won't be able to tolerate it. I understand now the gist of the issue you mention all the time. Unity, connection, positive thoughts, good connections. Is compassion essentially the basis of it? Is that right? Yes, practically speaking, it's not even compassion. It's the division of all the great suffering, the opposite of a great desire and a great light that has to fill this desire, and the absence of the intention, not for my own sake, that enables the desire to be filled with light. So can it only be filled if my intention is for the sake of others? Yes, this is why we need this balance here. All this can only be realized if we learn to be compassionate to divide the difference between absolute fulfillment and absolute emptiness to every person. Obviously, nobody will be worse off in this case, but if we want to divide it this way, the difference itself will disappear. That is the whole point of this remarkable quality of unification. And then the state of blissfulness will come, right? Yes. That's beautiful. Then this feeling of the contradiction of impossibility of inner cry morphs into quenching, into something beyond the corporeal, into pleasure. There, there there's no difference between great pain and great pleasure. There, they connect. And what does the pain become in this case? Pleasure. Pain becomes pleasure? Yes, because you have balanced them out. This is very elevated. That's how it works, at a higher level. Is the pain given to us to turn it into pleasure? Yes, of course. And the greatest pain as a result turns out to be the greatest pleasure? Yes. If you know how to balance these opposites, you get pleasure.